What's up guys? So <laughs> we got what one weekend left before we leave for Windrock and we figured we'd take our box of <laughs> bad axles and see if we can't combine some good ends together with some good shafts and make something happen for some spares. And it isn't looking too good. No. It seems we break the same end every time <laughs> <laughs> so that we're screwed. If our rears I mean, we've never broken a rear CV. Yeah, so yeah. take that for what it's worth. We've literally <laughs> never just... broken a CV. We've snapped. So this is our buddy Ethan. He had the orange um, SSYXZ, I think it was a 17. And he snapped this one. Just came down hard on the power on a waterfall climb. Snapped that one. We thought it was the CV because it was behind the boot, but it's actually the shaft. And then Josh's where he broke clean off both those round film. I'll throw them in right here. Same line. Oh, God, that broke. What happened? Yeah. What happened? Literally snapped the shaft clean in half. That's interesting. First one we broke like that. But yeah, it went right underneath this ledge here and it was pretty much doomed. Yeah, on the waterfall at S'more. Both at, both at S'more, both on kind of waterfalls too. Yeah, yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, both of those. Other than S'more, we've never broken a rear axle. So, I mean, that's pretty interesting. Um, what else? We got our pile of diffs. Yeah. We just had to... We're going we're gonna to scatter everything out and show you guys what... What we bring. What all we bring, for sure. But other than all of these axles, which... Might look uh, <laughs> look a little scary. Well, how many have we broke? We've so broken. well, we can't say we broke all of them though. We broke in two years. So let's tell a little story quick. This one, okay. <laughs> this one you can tell the story. This one was yours. You okay. pulled your so rig both, apart, right? Both of these. Yeah. Both of these two were in the front of my machine at about what twenty one or twenty two hundred miles. A little bit after we started making videos. Yeah. Yeah. What did I pull my machine apart for? I think it was wheel bearings. No, bushings. Bushings. The front air and bushings yeah, yeah. at probably it was just over two thousand miles we'll say. The front air and bushings at a little place, so actually we found it out, we were strapping it down on the trailer <laughs> and we went I just was pushing the machine to make sure the straps were good and the whole A arm just moved back and forth and then and then the machine obviously didn't move. So yeah. found that out. So we pulled it apart. And after pulling it apart, the diff side, so the green side of the axles. So to this point, I've never broken an axle <laughs> in my machine. Like rears are still OEM stock to this day. Fronts, I had the issue. So when I pulled it apart, the green end, so it was the diff side, was like super, super bound up, or it, w it was really hard to move around. So we dug in, pulled them apart, pull, pulled the CV apart, and it actually there's like a. We'll show you when you get when we get one of these yeah, axles apart. Yeah, there's almost so there's this piece, but then there's a cage that goes around it, and then it goes into the into the CV boot. But the cage around it was actually like had hairline cracks in it, and it was just all wore. So it never broke. That's why they're both still complete. Yeah, yeah, but right. It was definitely peace of mind for me for the riding we do. I just bought two new fronts and then had these. Now they're like back up to my spare new one. <laughs> these are the spares for my spare. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the two that are hairline cracked in the cage in here. And then he has a brand new rear in the box and then a new front. Well, actually it's, it's the one wrapped up is a brand new one. Yeah. This one here, it's already rested, but Believe it or not, it's new. <laughs> yeah, never broke. No, my the red machine has never broken. Yeah, so. take that for what it's worth, because that's <laughs> bull. <laughs> um, all things considered, though, I haven't broken too many, so I'll go through quick. That's all 
your machine has done with axles, right? It's just these two. Yep. So then my machine, I believe, was this one. Yeah, this one at the cliffs. I have that on film as well. I was just, it must have been cracked or something prior because it wasn't even like that hard of a hit compared to a lot of things, we'll say. But that one I broke on the front just right when we got to the cliffs, of course. Five minutes and we ride. Yeah, and that's <laughs> like our Selma local park. You know, that's where we go for like a day trip. And of course, we didn't bring like all of our stuff. We weren't well prepared. You guys probably seen the video at this point. But that's how that one went down. Then my other one would be this guy here. And this one, the wheel side has an issue. It just like clicks at full lock. So it never broke either, but we're actually gonna tear this one apart. But this one definitely has some kind of issue. Hopefully we can see what the issue is. That'd be nice for peace of mind knowing that it's a legit axle going back together. Yeah, but, so, so we're just going to take the end, because mine was all issues on the diff side. His is the wheel side, so we're going to take apart one of my wheel sides on my spare, and hopefully put it on this one, and then it should be good to go. Yeah, plus we're doing it to this axle, because this axle is actually, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but the shaft itself is banana <laughs> And this one has a straight shaft and a good diff side. So it just needs this wheel side put on that one. And then this shaft would be good to go. Um, the other shaft, I've never broken a rear. So that's the only shaft issues. And to be fair, this this shaft started popping at Windrock. And that was right after I broke, what, a tie rod? Yeah, you bent your tie rod. Hidden. Yeah, I bent my tie yeah, rod. The clutch issues. Yeah. So it all started with that. So yeah. then you can only run two wheel drive. And then we were on our way back, just trying to get back. It was dark out, and he hit, he hit a big rock. And yeah, running two-wheel drive because the yeah. clutch literally wouldn't hold four-wheel drive. Yeah. So riding back in the mountains, I was in two-wheel drive, slid off the line. If you could bend a wind rock, you know, I mean, line choice is everything. Yeah. And just couldn't hold where I wanted to be. And slid off, bent the tie rod, and this was the axle that was on that wheel side, I think. So we just think it hyperextended it. Yeah, right. So can't really blame the axle for yeah. for that. So I've had pretty good luck with axles. The one was just a fluke thing. I don't know how that happened. And then the other one was because of the, the tie rod. So that's kind of the axle story. Well, Josh is broken. Oh, Josh broke one front as well. Two fronts. When he did broke, he... he broke one at the Badlands on that climb. Oh, you yeah, you're right. Clip. You yep. can see the spark. Something like spark. And then he broke one at small. Yeah, so every <laughs> axle we've broken, I have a clip for except for one. And that was Josh's front. He wasn't on film, he was like the first guy to oh, go up the yeah. hill. And we didn't know it was that rowdy. So we, we weren't filming yet. So that's kind of the story on all these broken axles. <laughs> it looks rough, but this is all between a year of absolutely bashing rigs and changing them even when they're not broken, you know? If yeah. they showed a sign, we'd pull them just because we'd rather do that than ruin yeah, a ride. And like he said before, this one was Ethan's, and then that's how I actually, I had a spare rear, and I actually just sold on my rear so we could keep wheeling. Yeah. It's a small trip. And this is between, all these axles came out of four machines. Yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty legit, in my opinion. Yeah, we've had very good luck, I think, with axles. With yes, machines. yeah, no doubt. So, as far as, as we would say, um, you know, if anybody's wondering, like, for our kind of riding, I wouldn't recommend going with any other axle as, like, a spare yeah. or even a replacement. But we're running 30s, maybe if you're running 32s or bigger, yeah, you, maybe you would need a stronger axle at that point. But, I, just, I mean, for what I've done, I've done a lot of research on this because obviously we don't want to break axles, but I haven't really seen anybody that's had any luck with anything but stop. 
we'll yeah. say. Yeah, right. We'll say, or whatever. You know, I've seen a lot of people try different things, and, you know, they'll say that the shaft is bigger, and they think that's stronger, but it's... It's truly not it's just you know whatever this material is it's been doing really well for us so that's why we've kept all stock and the price is you know the price is right it's they're pretty reasonably priced I think a rear is just over 200 bucks and a front's 160 I yeah. want to say yeah so they're much. really not bad you right know, a good aftermarket axles over $200 so. yeah and the cheap ones don't last at all at least back from when we were running RZRs yeah yeah. You know, tried some. Josh tried some cheap ones, and they wouldn't even last one ride. So they weren't even weren't even worth it. But um, but yeah, we'll we'll pull one of these axles apart and we'll show you the process and see. What's hopefully, inside? hopefully see what's wrong. But we'll definitely show you what's inside of one. So I pulled the boot off this one that the the axle was like popping or whatever. Oh my. Ooh, damn. Oh, she cut. And this uh. This little ball fell out, <laughs> which is never good. So here's like that cage he was just talking about earlier that goes around the knuckle piece. Um, I don't even know if I was pointing the camera. <laughs> but anyways, the cage is like broke. That held the knuckle. So that probably happened when it like hyper extended. Yeah, not good things going on with this. No. Thing, so. so we'll get it cleaned up and, and, uh, we'll show you, and show you. But it's going. So you guys seen just there, there's just this clip on the inside, like the the far side. You can't see it. No. <laughs> Plus you're not <laughs> even facing it. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. it's just this little like spring clip. Yeah, so when you're if you're trying to take this off, you know, there's nothing on this side of it that holds it. And some axles have stuff in here. I think that's how the rear axle is. There's a clip around here. But this one actually you just beat off. And it should yeah. be beat it off. <laughs> should be good. <laughs> so here's a real good shot of this cage that goes around and you can see it's broke from here to here. And there should be like a little ball, I don't know, ball bearing or whatever that rides in the cup here and then in here. Yeah, but obviously so one. Yeah, and that's what fell off when we took out the these, when we took off the boot. These little balls. And this is the axle that got screwed up from when it got oh. <laughs> Way to go. When it got hyper extended when I broke the tie rod. So you can see that there. Just thought we'd give you a close up of what happened. So here's a comparison. This is the good one that was off of Billy's axle. And here's the bad one. Obviously that was off of mine. So you can see where it's missing. And the little ring that goes around. Yeah, it's like a cage that holds the balls in there. Yeah. It's like the axle's underwear, you know, holds your balls. <laughs> <laughs> How do you even come up with this? <laughs> so this axle is pretty much junk now, because this end is rough. <laughs> and this axle, <laughs> this axle, this end should be good, although it feels a little questionable, because <laughs> it doesn't really move, but once it's on the machine and runs a little couple of revolutions, she'll be worn back in. <laughs> it's better than what it, you know, it's got to be better than that one. We know that one's cracked, so. And this one I had in here, this one was fine. Because I changed this one a long time ago. In a different axle surgery episode. So since we followed it a little bit, I'll show you, tell you guys how we got it on. To put the new, to put the new end on. Kind of stupid, but I don't know. It's the same theory as like when you push it into the diff. You know, it's just got like the little clip that catches. But for whatever reason, it wasn't just pushing. Like that piece wasn't just pushing onto here. So you had to hold the clip yeah, like this down. This is after we broke two clips. So we might as well just admit our mistakes. So we yeah. broke two clips trying to get it on. So what we did is I just turned the axle, pushed it up against the wall like this and I was able to just use a screwdriver push in on the little piece of grass and just leave that in there and then I just pushed a clip around so it tuck in and it was enough to hold it and then hammered it home with the with the hammer yeah so and then it went right in. yeah they hammer right off but don't just like leave the clip on and hammer it on because you'll <laughs> you'll break the clip ask Luckily us we have a few ask us how we know yeah but 
Yeah, luckily they all have clips on them, so we had some extras. But yeah, you just gotta push it down as you slide the new piece on, and then it'll work. So now we just gotta grease it up and throw the boot on, and we're in action. So as we're throwing together kind of everything for our trip, figured we'd do a quick shot and tell you guys what we bring in this ammo can that I actually keep in the trunk of my Wagzy. Um, got some Gorilla Tape, flashlight, some tie wire, some wire nuts, you know, probably 20 feet of wire, some RTV, some screwdrivers, electrical tape, all your tire plug tools and everything like that, a couple screwdrivers, channel locks, uh, adjustable wrench, vice grips, and then this is like the spline socket and a ratchet just to pull a wheel off because I carry the spare tire too so and some zip ties, allen wrenches since all the plastic and stuff on these things are allen wrenches figured it'd be a good thing to carry and then the chisel, I don't know if you, if you guys remember this but that's the chisel back from when uh, when we bent the tire that we've been talking about today and we used what a chisel some hose chisel, clamps hose clamps, tie wire Gorilla Pop tape. tape. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah, just as like a splint to get it back. So, it was bent. It's still bent. So that's all kind of what we carry on the trail for, like, tool-wise. And then that goes back in here. Carry a couple ratchet straps that aren't in here yet. Um, some toe straps a uh, snatch block, a little 12 volt air compressor, some more tire plugs, and I got my helmet in here, but other than that, Dude, don't forget, oh, the, 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 radi gun. the radiator cleaner, so I don't know if you guys, <laughs> <laughs> you guys got some overheating issues on the YXZ, we got the new fix for it, yeah, it's the one dollar work on, it actually doesn't do shit. Yeah, it was more of a joke than anything, but <laughs> thought maybe it'd help a little bit. But okay, so we like to go prepared at least as well as we can be. I think you could see what you know what we got here. So each person usually on a trip will bring ten gallons of gas with, plus the machines fall when we get there, so we don't really have to go and get gas much. I mean, we try not to. Um, we have four front axles and two rears as spares from what we could cobble up together yep. <laughs> Got a couple new ones and some other mismatched garbage but you know it'll save the trip and we have a brand new steering rack that we carry with us because we've broken one of those we have this bucket here this we is like the graveyard <laughs> one dip this one is welded, yep. so this is completely welded diff. So bolt in, all time, four wheel drive. And we got this cobbled up. Yeah, this one looks like a grenade went off inside of the diff. Yeah, it's not good. <laughs> this is the one that I blew at Brimstone. But this one we ended up just cleaning. So we found out that you can run them with the broken spider gears. So this diff is a spare that's got a couple teeth missing on the spiders. <laughs> Pulled it apart, cleaned everything out. JB welded all the holes. And she's ready to go. Yeah, it's kind of a. I mean, it's definitely worth having, you know. Yeah, I. Yeah, I agree. So if the diff, so like, like you guys might not know, maybe you do know, but like Billy's going on this trip with a hole in his diff, and so is Josh. Granted, Billy's about to get to it, but you know, point is, is if those diffs grenaded, you know, at least we had something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we both blew our diffs at S'more, so we uh, we at least ran both of us a full day, if not two oh, days, yeah. on the blown diff. And I actually borrowed my machine out to a buddy and had it. He went trail riding up north with a blown diff. Yeah, and, and when we say blown diff, like it's not like blown diff like a can or Polaris, where like it's skipping and chattering it. It still works fine, so like, you know. Yeah, you wouldn't even know it yeah. was blown unless you looked and seen that it's windowed. Right. And it just breaks the tooth off the spider gear for those of you that aren't aware of what happens. And the ring gear shoots the tooth out the case. And then you lose your fluid. And that's about it. So, you know, 
a kind of a temporary fix is just uh, hope that you got hope hope that all the metal is either out of it or pull it apart, take the metal out, JB weld the case, and it'd probably be okay, you know. But but anyways, back to what we're bringing on the trip. So yeah, I mean, while we're on the desk here, this is my new baby in here. <laughs> we got this fresh, brand new diff that I ordered up, and. Hopefully I won't have to use it, and I'm going to sell it on eBay sometime in my life. Yeah, and Josh has a a used diff as well that he's bringing into his house. So there's, you know, two good diffs, one for Billy, one for Josh. Um, so it's not that we're going unprepared, it's just we're kind of curious to see, like, how long they last. You know, like, it's it's a there is no fix for this at this time. So it's almost like, why put a brand new diff in? just to do the exact same thing when it still functions fine. So it's kind of a test to see. Yeah, I mean, it's like a $900, you know, paperweight. If I just throw it in there, go hit devil's elbow first day and detonate it. Yeah. Then I'm just right back to where I was when I came there. Yeah, right. $900 down the hole. Yeah. So we're just going to see what happens. And if they lock up, it's really not that bad to change. I mean, we did one in like a half hour. I think yeah. we had my diff out. I mean, it would suck on the trail if it happened to, like, completely lock up or something, but, you know, we'll figure it out at the time. Yeah, we're pretty ingenuitive when it comes to recovery <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. So, back to the other spares. So, we have, this is a tie rod, one of the stock ones off our rigs, because we're both running Weller, so we just still carry. We have two tie rods that we carry, just ready to bolt in. Well, with the rack that comes with tie rods, at least it comes with the the shaft part that actually bends. We've never broken this part, but we bent the the shaft. The shaft part. We yeah, I bent one and then a guy we were riding with bent the shaft as well. But both times like it was fine on the rack side and it was fine on the wheel side. Yeah. So it's kinda cool, you know, when you buy the new rack. Kinda cool, kinda sucks because yeah. I definitely don't need spare tie rods at this point. So like Yeah, when you're running wellers or red lock type yeah. they're kind of a pain. Right. So I mean you're getting the spare tie rods even though you don't need them, but, but yeah, anyways. The hiccups. <laughs> but anyways, carry slime. That's important. Sorry, I have the hiccups. <laughs> I don't know what. Oh my god. Cut for a side. <laughs> okay, so sorry about that. I have the hiccup. So, so we're switching. Yeah, I'll do yeah. it over from here. We got the tie rods you just talked about. We got some grease. Okay, something detonates and we need some of that. We got our grinder, we'll actually bring a welder as well, so in case we detonate like an A-arm or, or a trailing arm or something like that, you know, take a little piece of angle iron and we could sleeve it and, or whatever and carry on. We could fix anything with a welder, so. Yeah, that's true. Um, we got this little box, it's got a couple of axle nuts because you're supposed to change the nut every time you put a new axle in, I believe. Or you're not supposed to reuse the nut, I don't know. Got some lug nuts, wheel studs. Um, got a tube, actually. One of my tires is tubed. Back in the brimstone videos, if you guys seen that. Um, we had a sliced sidewall, like in the bead. And I actually ended up using one of these tubes when I got home. I had to fix it up and it's been good ever since. So I grabbed another tube, because my tires are actually all pretty beat up on the sides, walls, and everything like that, but, um, other than that, I mean, that's the main things. Uh, I guess we carry quite a bit of fluids and shit, too. We've got some brake fluid, some, some motor oil. Yeah, for the trans and motor, and then we got diff oil, too. Yeah, yeah, which is obviously key, because there's not diff fluid in any of these diffs, so it just leak out, and then we've got some coolant. Extension cord, battery charger, kind of as much stuff as we could think of. Um, and then we always carry just one of the Harbor Freight bottle jacks. It's never let us down. Thing works good for the 20 or 30 bucks that it is. It's pretty compact instead of dragging around a big floor jack, you know. And then these are the tool kits that we bring along with us. Actually, here's a couple other spare parts that I didn't say. We've just got some axle boots. Um, when I first got my rig, I had some issues with the axle boots, so it was kind of something that I bought some spares of back then, but never ran into the problem again. I think it was because of those Weller boot guard things that I put on there. 
Nice. Yeah, so the 16s don't come with the... Here, I'll show you. <laughs> Damn hiccups. So them guards that covered a boot. The 16s don't come with that. They came on the 17s and newer, so he had a axle boot. I had two go issue. Yeah, I, yeah. I had two bad in one weekend. Like the first weekend I rode the machine. So then after that I didn't realize, you know, what a problem it was or whatever. So I got a couple extra boots. Anyways, never used them again. And then these are kind of our tools that we bring along with us. You know, we've got a toolbox set up with metric stuff. You know, deep well, shallow, half inch, three eighths drive, all that kind of stuff. Some C clamps. It's actually the secret I might get graduated into the on the trail <laughs> kit. <laughs> yeah, that might need to be up here. It's a little guy, but you never know. And then Yeah, I mean we got a just the harbor freight, you know, <laughs> one ninety nine tester, whatever that thing yeah. costs. Free with the coupon. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean it gets the job done, you know. A couple flashlights, some valve stems, some more zip ties, some tech screws, wire nuts, butt splices, stuff to get you through the weekend and then we got another toolbox that's like separated with all standard stuff yeah so basically the same thing just with all standard we got all our standard wrenches and sockets you know another three thing, eighths half inch yeah another thing that we carry is snap ring pliers that's something that comes in handy that one trip we didn't have and we were trying to butcher together an axle with some spare parts or whatever like on the, on the trailer and it was definitely something we wish we had so we definitely don't leave without those again because a lot of the axles are held in with with c-clips and stuff but other than that i mean i mean we bring milwaukee impacts uh big and small the little milwaukee air comp compressor that we got it's just not all <laughs> <laughs> out here sorry again i have the hiccups <laughs> but we try to go you know we try to go as most prepared as we can be and yeah granted, know, this is one of our bigger trips for us yeah you know, it's about a 10 hour drive so and whenever we don't bring anything is usually when something will go wrong yeah, so sure. it might be overkill who I knows? Mean, yeah we bring a lot of stuff but we've also changed a clutch at the cabin in the dark <laughs> so i mean that was that was pretty in depth i feel but I don't know. That's yeah, a good thing we brought those plates, though. I mean, yeah. you don't know how much you need this shit unless you don't have it. So, we try to go prepared. I don't know, we just figured, we've seen people post about it before, you know, like, what do you bring on the trail kind of posts. Figured we'd throw this together since we're doing it anyways, and uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, you know, and look forward to Windrock for sure. Yeah, stay tuned. Should be a good trip. Should get some good riding videos for you guys. And we'll see you then. Bye.